Previously, on Epic 7 Abridged, Plume, using a dark magic stone, summoned the Acolyte Tenebria to Rengar, causing mass destruction. Fortunately, after becoming an heir, Yuna, alongside her guardian Kazram, was able to force her to retreat. We pick up a couple days after the events of last episode. Rass was able to destroy the Archdemon's might in Rengar. However, for grievous crimes against Rengar, he was sentenced to death by 500-page apology letter. Upon completing 217 pages, Rass's replacement identification finally arrives, clearing him of all charges. Oh, and Guzma, after being interrogated, reveals they received the Dark Magic Stones from the Nahinqui Merchant Guild. Mercedes believes that this group may have connections to Vildred, so Rass decides to investigate, since these acolytes, even without being connected to Vildred, are bad news. Karin suggests that Rass and co. travel to the Savara Emporium, which coincidentally is the same area that the Afi Merchant Guild, who just recently requested assistance about the Savaran black market, is based. Never one to turn down assistance and believing he can kill two birds with one stone, Rass agrees. So the party heads to Levelin Harbor so they can travel to Savara. So the party is vibing in Levelin, but taking a page out of his master's book, Arky lost their map. Rass, sick of Arky's bullshit, despite making literally the same mistake last episode, starts committing animal abuse against Arky. Fooled by his cute appearance, a mercenary named Cartuja shows up and defends Arky's honor. For you see, this mercenary is Cartuja, and he I speak speaks for the and under his watch, no furry shall be harmed. Cartuja is a pretty nice guy and offers to take Rass to Savara. Oh, and Cartuja is a Suin, which are basically animal people. Cartuja, for example, is a giant orange brownish cat, I think. On the way to Savara, Cartuja tells Rass more about the six merchant guilds of Savara. And surprise, surprise, the Nahinqui guild are up to some naughty stuff, such as slavery. Anyways, they then run into another mercenary named Armin. She's like, hey. Hey. Rass is like, hey. Okay. And lightning sparks between the two. She asks, you're kind of cute. Are you Rass Eclair? Hero of legend, heir of the covenant, destined to save this world. And he's like, yeah. And with that confirmation, she attacks him, going for the kill. Fortunately, Rass has type advantage, so he's able to not die fighting Armin, and she's forced to retreat. The party continues through the desert until they eventually run into Rish and Tish, representatives of the Afi Merchant Guild, that were tasked with escorting Rass. So without a second thought, Rass drops Cartuja and leaves to hang out with the much younger and more human-looking Rish and Tish. So the two take Rass to Key Ruberan, where the leader of the Afi guild, conveniently named Master Afi, is waiting. On the way there, they see a black dog cat thing on the side of the road. This thing reveals that his name is Purgis, and he too is an heir. However, his guardian was kidnapped, and he needs help. Unable to wait any longer, Purgis rushes off to rescue his kidnapped guardian. Rass notices that Purgis does not have the aura of an heir, but the fur and nails left behind definitely do belong to a guardian. So Rass decides what's the worst that can happen and chases after him. Arky is able to track the scent of this mysterious guardian. However, it leads to Key Ruberan, which is where they were heading in the first place. Somehow, the party never noticed that there was a key covered in the kidnapped guardian's fur. They're all like, yo, this is whack. What do we use this key for? Fortunately, they run into the leader of the Nahinqui guild, Master Nahinqui, and he's like, oh, I recognize that key. You can use it to enter the Weeping Vixen Waterway, a nearby underground passage. So the party goes to this passage, and as they travel through it, Mercedes recognizes traces of dark magic. Tish speculates that this is the work of the Church of Ilrios, pointing out their growing popularity. This just leaves Rass even more confused by this timeline, because while Ilrios is Daichi's sibling, and was the one who sent the Archdemon. Ordinary people shouldn't know this information. The party continues and finally find the Guardian, who they recognize as Hanian, showing up just as Vildred kills it. That's cold. We didn't even get to see the character model of Hanian. Rass is like, WTF, Arby? And Arby is like, I'm doing what I promised. I will kill you and the goddess and end this cycle of death forever. Guardians are constructs of the goddess, so I'm merely getting rid of them before they get in my way. Rass is like, how dare you? Heyron restored your memories of the previous timelines, so you should know these were your allies that you fought alongside of. How could you kill them in cold blood? And Arby is like, 
You freaking hypocrite. It was you, Rass, who continuously dragged people into war, leading them on with the hope of victory in a battle they can never win. And then Vildred drops a huge truth bomb. Heirs die when they are killed. Like, permanently. They don't come back. So Ruel and Kisei are dead forever. Anyways, after this heartfelt speech, ever the Sundere, Arby retreats and Rass chases after him. However, Rass gets blocked by a wraith. Rass is super confused at first, oh mistaking God. her for Kisei, which makes no sense because she's permadeath. However, Arky tells him she's not Kisei, she just looks like Kisei. The Wraith then introduces herself as Sigret, who was created to faithfully follow orders. And right now, her orders are to stop Rass. So the two fight, and Rass somehow pulls off another miraculous victory, ignoring type advantage. But having allowed Vildred to escape, Sigret's job is done so she retreats after grievously wounding Mercedes. The party returns to the weeping vixen waterway in order to properly set Hani into rest. And as they examine his corpse, they see a brand on his body. A brand they've previously seen on the dark magic stones from last episode! Rish also recognizes it as the mark of the Elrios church. Purgis starts freaking out about all of this and notices a group of monsters. So he and Rast work together in order to dispose of them. Suddenly, Purgis challenges Rast to a duel, swearing to kill him then and there. However, Mercedes, disappointed in how Sigret kind of stomped her, decides to fight Purgis and solos him, because now it is convenient type advantage is a thing. Before she can deal the killing blow, Purgis begs for mercy, swearing to tell them everything he knows. Purgis reveals that everything you've heard about Nahinkui you've heard about me. is true. It's true. Kidnapping, slavery, dark magic stone trafficking, you who's done so it all? Disappointing. Tish and Rish then escort Rass to rest Radwa, where Purgis says Nahinkui is doing sketchy stuff. Meanwhile, Nahinkui is in the middle of a slave trade, trying to sell some sween. When suddenly, Rass and co. bust in, breaking up the operation. Nahinkui sixes monsters and mercenaries, with notable ones being Clurry and Assassin Koli on Rass. However, they're no match for him. Nahinkui is then detained by Rish and Tish, and they tell him he's going to be presented to a disciplinary committee for kidnapping and selling sween to the Elrios Church. However, all the drama Purgis was doing in the waterway paid off, because all evidence of Nahinkui working with the Church of Ilrios has been destroyed. So the only thing he can be charged with is slave trade, which is still pretty bad, but it could be worse. The party then heads back to Ki Ruberan, and Rish and Tish reveal that their findings show that Sigret was the middleman between the Church of Ilrios and Nahinkui, and was spotted meeting with him in Solayu Swamp, which conveniently is also the base of operations for the Elrios Church. Now that their cooperation with Vildred and Nahinkui has come to light, Rass has been tasked with investigating them, and by bribing Arky with cookies, Rass is forced to accept this request. Rass then asks Mercedes and Arky if Sigret felt similar to Mercedes, and Mercedes speculates they might be the same type of wraith. This leads to Rass questioning Mercedes' origins. However, just like in Chapter 1, her memories prior to being brought to DN by Crow are non-existent. Mercedes starts feeling bad that she has no memories, so Rass gives her an inspirational speech, telling her about the power of friendship as they head off to Solayu. We then cut to an ominous scene, where we see just how exactly dark magic stones are made. And wow, that got dark. Awful metal alchemist in this room. With the revelation that dark magic stones are made using Suin that Nahinkui was kidnapping and selling via alchemy, the chapter closes. And that's all for today's episode of Epic 7 Abridged. Stay tuned as next time we'll be concluding the furry arc.